Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk tonight about rattlesnakes, which fall into two um, genera. There are Cisturus and there are Protilus. And we're going to start with the Cisturus. This is a Massasauga rattlesnake. Uh, these guys are not very big, so this is actually a good size one. And this is a western Massasauga rattlesnake. That's a pregnant one. It's probably going to have babies. Maybe. And um, the Cisturus also includes the pygmy rattlesnakes, if you've heard of those. Cisturus are generally a lot smaller. The rattle tends to be a lot smaller, just because the snake is smaller, but also in relation to the body, the rattle is smaller. And uh, the main difference, if you happen to be able to see it, is that Cisturus have two plates, scales on the head, whereas Crotalus tend to have well, an assortment, or they have paired scales, excuse me, where Crotalus tend to have a kind of motley assortment of scales on the top of the head in between the um, eye plates. Massasauga rattlesnakes that many of you may be familiar with, the eastern Massasauga that are found in uh, Michigan and a little tiny bit in Ohio and other kind of northeast states, are an endangered species. Now these guys, the eastern form is a swamp rattlesnake. They tend to be associated with wetlands, and as I'm sure all of you know, we talked about yesterday, wetlands are diminishing because people didn't understand how valuable they were, so they've lost a lot of their habitat and they are protected, I'm pretty sure, everywhere that they occur. Um, the western forms are doing better because there is still more habitat available out west, but with a lot of western animals, it's kind of interesting, they never used to have a problem. There was so much land out west, so much of it was Bureau of Land Management land, or farmland, or agricultural use, so it was maybe not totally natural, but there were still natural areas. But now, as our population is growing, more and more people think it's pretty nice to live in Arizona, or to live even in places like Texas, where it's warm, and the weather is more to their liking than the Northeast, and so animals in those areas are starting to have more pressures on them from population of humans. Desert Mossasagos in Arizona are a protected species. Yeah, that's true in Arizona. You're not allowed to touch them. I think in Arizona, that's probably one of the most popular states to move to of the western states. And so a lot of things have gotten endangered or been you know, pressurized there with it that maybe hasn't occurred in other places. But Arizona, to its credit, has protected a lot of those animals. So, um, these guys, because they tend to be small, eat a lot of things like lizards and frogs, even as adults. Now that would eat a rodent in the wild, of course, if it found one, but they will also frequently take um, ectothermic prey, like such you know, lizards, frogs, even fish. So, that's probably quite a few There is a naturalist up there who's told people that the eastern Mastasaga venom is weak. It actually is very toxic in different populations. In fact, extremely neurotoxic in one population. We, we've we collected venom from these snakes, and in some instances it has been white, which may not be that meaningful to you, but I will tell you, that <coughs> most light-colored venoms that are white or clear tend to have a very low molecular weight, which means they're fast-acting, which tends to mean that they are neurotoxic. So the venom of these has not been really well studied, so they should not be taken lightly, even though they're small, they still may be very potent. We know of one keeper who was bitten by a Western Mossasaga and was in serious medical distress. According to uh, Manny Rubio, there have been a few fatalities still from Mossasaga. So, yes. All right. We're going to move on. The next one is slightly larger. You'll be able to see yeah. it a little better. But I wanted to bring this one to service. This is larger. <laughs> it doesn't want to get out. No, it's like, right, no, I don't want to be on this side. They're like the table. <laughs> <laughs> professional snake <laughs> There we go. The bigger something is to their body, the more it feels like a big feather than the rest of them. Yeah. Smaller, that snake, did that snake rattle at all? I didn't hear it. Did you hear anything? 